All right, folks, once again, we've got a mission team from Hurley, and I know that they have worked hard because they look beat and they look tired, but I think they're happy today as well. So uh, I, I know that the events of last night with the tornadoes and all probably had an impact on some of the discussions and all that y'all had. Uh, but uh, if you don't mind sharing a little bit with us about how your day went, we really would enjoy it. It got really wet. <laughs> really wet. Rained. Rained, rained a lot, rained. huh? Yeah, all day. It rained sideways this morning. Yes. Tree went down. Tree mm -hmm. went down in front of the church. Yep. Yeah. Mike and Jim had to pick up the tree and move it out the road. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't a real big tree. No. Yeah. <laughs> Real men. Got a what? lot of wind and rain. Uh, we went out and uh, we had uh, another person from the church go with us today, a fellow named James, who's a deacon there. And he, he rode with Mike and I and uh, Jean, and uh, we had. Uh, we had some good visits. The rest of the folks rode in the church van, and they had some good visits. Uh, they'll tell you about what they did. Uh, we met some interesting people, and uh, hopefully we helped them a little bit. They helped us a lot. And the devastation in that area is just really unbelievable. Very difficult to describe how bad things looked up there. And some of those poor folks just got wiped out. And some of them are still living in houses that are condemned. Uh, we went into one house, the man, his house has been condemned. And the backside of underneath, bottom, backside is gone. And he's still living there. But uh, the, the need is great. And I, I think we've had a very successful couple of days, uh, looking forward to getting back home, getting back in that routine, but we'll give you a full report when the time comes. Maybe some of the other folks want to talk, they are in the other cars. Uh, we had how many contacts today? 11? No, no. 18. 18. 18. We had 18 contacts today. Remarkable. We had a lot of We found one one uh, one group that uh, one family that uh, didn't have any hardly anything left from the flood so had a young boy about six so we went to walmart today and bought him a we asked him if santa claus was going to bring him anything for christmas he said well i, I don't know so we went to walmart and he's going to have a good christmas so <laughs> his name was eli and we bought him a bike and a helmet and a <laughs> horn to go on his bike and uh, yeah, his family is living in probably, I don't know, maybe a 20-foot camper. Mm. That's what they're living in right now. And one of the deacons that rode with us today is going to deliver it to them on Christmas Day or somewhere in that neighborhood. So. And uh, Karen did a bunch of the, Karen is a, Went to, went to clown school. Clown college. <laughs> She's a clown college graduate. <laughs> and she did a lot of animal balloons for the kids, and that was really, uh, I didn't realize that yesterday, but I, I, I volunteered to go with her today most of the time with all of those little animals she was making. She's got talent. But that was real special and, uh, to, to do that for the kids, and uh, it was it's been quite an, ex quite an experience. So we've probably been blessed more than the people we've had. Amen. So, mm. uh, yeah, I think to listen to these folks' stories, Chick, I think, and, and Mel and I know we, we kind of reinforce this message to them that they've been through some hard times, and there's still more hard times to come before they get back on their feet, but they really have a testimony because I would say everybody that I met actually was uh, really connected with God, and this is a testimony that you can tell folks, this is where I was at. We had one family today that had uh she had two, she has two autistic children 
Mm -hmm. uh, one was three years old and one was, I don't know, what do you say, 12, 13? Teenager. Yeah. Teenager. And um, so the teenager, he's verbal, um, but he doesn't, he's never really been connected to the church or, or God or anything like that. But she said when they left the house, it was all that she could do to take him and the three-year-old baby, get out of the house and crawl up the side of the mountain. And I'm literally saying it was some, it's a mountain. They live on the side of a mountain. They crawled up this mountain to get up out of the water that was rising up so quickly and taking their house, you know, damaging it. And she said she started praying to Jesus. And she said that the 13-year-old, 12 or 13-year-old, the whole time was saying amen. 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 So it's those times, I think, when people are really desperate that they reach out to God, and hopefully that'll have a long-term effect on it. That's a wonderful story. And do you think do you think there might be an opportunity for us uh, at Hunting to continue a relationship with these guys? Uh, you you broke up a little bit, Chick. Could you repeat that? I was just wondering if there is an opportunity for hunting to continue to help, not just this one time, but maybe make them a, a sister church or something like that, that we can join and reach out and help them on a regular basis. Um, I don't know. Al. I don't know. The church that we work with, they're pretty good shape and they do a lot in the community or just about everybody we spoke with had knew the church, knew of the church, and they have a sanctuary, a brand new sanctuary that's only a couple years old, and it's totally paid for. So financially, at least the church had not hurt. Um, yeah. And most of the people that we saw attend church. A lot yeah. of them were, were regular church attendees, but not the church oh, that we were representing. But they, uh, they go to other churches in the area. And there must be oh, 50 churches right around where we were. Yeah, something like that. No. Every denomination, everything. And uh, most of the people, I would say 90% of the people we talked to, or more maybe, were spiritual people. Yeah. They were believers, yeah. they were Bible readers. Uh, we saw some worn out Bibles where we went. <laughs> and one of the things that touched us today in one of our visits, the, the fellow was literally dying, right? Mike? Yeah, he uh, he's on the liver transplant list. He's oh. doctors that have told him two different occasions, told his wife he has less than 12 hours to live, and another time just within a few days he would die. And he made it through both, both of those. And she teared up saying, you know, it it was a miracle of God that he's still alive. And she started crying and said, that What breaks my heart is. While I hope he gets a transplant, you know, he gets a he gets a new liver. I know that somebody's going to have to die as a result of that. And that, she says, I have a hard time with that. Mm. But it was it was really good. I, you know, it was uh, it's it's been rewarding for all of us. And and to and to what you were saying earlier, uh, we've seen quite a few, um, especially during the week, our first day here, we saw um, BGAV folks out here. That we're doing uh, repair work and things like that, so they're still on on scene providing assistance. That's great. Yeah, Billy Graham group really does a wonderful job. You know, uh, no, you no, that, no, that was back. No, that was Baptist General Association of Virginia. Oh, okay. Baptist I thought you were talking about the Billy Graham Association. That's the relief. No, that's great. No. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I know that the church is so proud and praying for you guys, for your safe return, for your protection. Uh, I'm just tickled to death to be associated with you because just like first Timothy uh, chapter one, verse eight, uh, it says we read, therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. You guys have done that. Y'all have reached out, you gave them your time, you gave them everything you had. And I know that that community is better because of the work that you guys did. Thank you for doing that. And, and please be careful coming home. We want to get that, 
that entire report, Mel, and we're going to hold you to that, buddy. So, uh, and and we'll we'll cut we'll cut some of Frank's time off so that you won't have to worry about running over. Okay. <laughs> How about we close in prayer? You guys get a night's sleep, and Mel, good luck tomorrow with your sermon uh, at Black uh, Blackley, right. and we'll be praying for you during the service and uh, looking for you guys to come home. So Heavenly Father, thank you, so thank you for, for this group of individuals, these true missionaries. These are wonderful people, and we uh, pray for the blessings that they have brought and the blessings that they'll bring back to hunting. Lord, maybe their work will inspire others, their sacrifice will teach others what it means to give of the love that Jesus gave. For we can't give anything more than ourselves. And I thank you for this example in a very, very difficult place, in a very difficult world, and in a very dangerous time. These are true wonderful Christian people, and we love them. So I ask for your protection and your blessings as they come home and share with us their stories and the stories of Hurley, Virginia. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Guys, get some sleep. Y'all drive careful. Uh, we're going to be eating some uh, Santa Claus breakfast tomorrow, and we'll be thinking about you along the way. I'd like to say I'm going to save you some, but I'm going to eat it all up. That's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Y'all have a good evening. And right, again, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.